Round 20 got underway under lights at the Richmond Oval with the Bloods home to the Bulldogs. West were on song from the start, a nine goal to one first quarter set the trend for the rest of the match. For Bloods coach Jared Mears, it was pleasing to see his players get their mojo back and the way his side ran and used the ball was just what the doctor ordered. Brett Turner at full forward followed on from his five goals last week with a bag of seven. It was just the fifth game of the year for the under-16 state player, who's also a state basketball representative. As well as his accurate kicking for goal, he also possesses a good vertical leap and is already attracting interest from AFL talent scouts. Nick Favretto was a member of the under-16 championship winning team in 2011, was also the round eight MVP this season. The midfielder has finally recovered from ankle and elbow injuries and was a real standout player who gathered 36 possessions, 15 marks, nine clearances, as well as slotting two goals. I know we talk about Ryan Dykesman every week, so all we'll say this week is 31 possessions, eight marks, seven clearances and two goals. Enough said. Nathan Brown is a state under-18 player who also made his presence felt. 29 disposals, 7 marks and 4 goals was a good night's work. Tom Schott is also a state under-18 player and he provided plenty of run on a wing and across half forward, collecting 25 possessions, 11 marks and with 12 inside 50s plus a goal, he really had the ball in a string in the second half. For Bulldogs coach David Harvey, it's been tough over the last six weeks to keep his young, inexperienced side on task against much stronger opposition. Tom Ryan, in his first game back after five weeks out with a knee injury, provided a contest at half-back and in the centre, collecting 21 possessions and seven marks. Patrick White returned after four games in the reserves, playing as a ruck rover and across half-forward. 17 disposals, eight marks and four goals was a good return for effort. Although it's not warm enough for cricket season just yet, the Bloods' final winning margin of 113 points would be a score Michael Clark would be happy to make. North Adelaide played host to the Eagles, who were coming off a double bye. For Eagles coach Shane Grimm, the challenge was to regain momentum and cohesion after many players had returned to play for school and local clubs during the break. Those players who had played every game were given the second week off to recharge their batteries. The Eagles' poor kicking for goal in the first half, coupled with the Roosters' accurate kicking, meant there was only eight points the difference at the long break. The Eagles moved up a notch after half-time and slowly managed to gain control of the match. Sam Rowland, an on-baller from Balaclava, returned to the side after half a dozen games in the reserves. His experience at the next level had been beneficial as he amassed 37 possessions and had 10 clearances. Caleb Lloyd was back in action after recovering from appendix surgery and was straight back into the thick of the action. 33 disposals, 11 marks, 7 tackles, 6 clearances and 2 goals is definitely a good day at the office. Coach Grimm was high in his praise of Nick Clift across half-back. The lad from Maitland may only possess a light frame but he's very courageous and always hits hard with a strong attack on the ball. Tasman Fitzgerald provided a strong presence at centre-half forward, collecting 24 possessions, 11 marks and a goal. Malcolm Carpenny from Munta returned from Ross Trevor College and used his silky smooth skills to good advantage. Playing on a wing and across half forward, he has a good turn of speed and displayed great evasive skills, collecting 19 disposals, 3 clearances and a goal. For the Roosters, under-16 state player Josh Pobke was a standout on a wing, collecting 32 possessions, 14 marks, 4 tackles, 2 clearances and 5 inside 50s. On baller Liam Jacker continues his great form with 24 disposals and 8 clearances. Cameron Sandico from the Ingle Farm Football Club put in a very solid performance at centre half back, providing plenty of rebound from his 17 disposals and 6 marks. The Eagles stretched their lead to 50 points before a late rally by the Roosters reduced the final winning margin to 37 points. Fifth place Glenelg faced up to seventh place Port Adelaide down at the bay. It was the Magpies who were first to flick the switch to on. They were first to the ball aggressive and confident and as a result they led at every change. For Port coach Julian Farkas, it was probably the Magpies' best four-quarter effort this season. Particularly pleasing was the desire shown by his players to want to win the ball and then use it to advantage. Port had 110 more possessions than Glenelg and out-tackled the Tigers 55-32. to Keenan Ramsey is an under-16 player who, in his third game, played in the key position of centre-half forward. He's very mobile and has a good pair of hands and collected 26 disposals, took 12 marks, laid seven tackles and kicked six goals. 
Alex Barnes copped a bit of an injury early in the game and spent most of the day at full forward rather than in the ruck. He proved to be a real target, finishing with 23 disposals and five goals. As a result, Jonathan Ross shouldered the bulk of the ruck work, collecting 22 hitouts and seven clearances. Jackson Williams has a strong desire to get his hands on the footy. He burrowed in hard and gathered 26 possessions, five tackles, six clearances, as well as bagging two goals. Likewise, Travis McIntyre is an under-16 inside midfielder who thrives on a contest. The harder and tougher it is, the more he likes it, and he laid an incredible 14 tackles and had five clearances. Glenelg was forced to make nine changes to their side, mostly due to promotions and played six under-16 players, two who made their debut at under-18 level. Josh Woodall made the trip up from Mount Gambier to play his fourth game for the Tigers. The inside midfielder has a great attitude and works really hard. 18 possessions, seven clearances, six inside 50s and two goals was worth the cost of the petrol. Elliot Chalmers is an under-16 player who made his debut at the next level, playing on a wing, up forward and as an inside midfielder, he collected 18 possessions, five tackles, four clearances and slotted a goal. Peter Clunes is also an under-16 player who in his second game acquitted himself very well at fullback. He competes well and positions himself well in a contest. Likewise, Luke Green, an under-16 player in his second game, provided some rebound from half-back. The Magpies managed to extend their lead at every change and at eight goal last quarter saw them run out convincing winners by a margin of 55 points. Ladder leaders Norwood made the long journey down to Norlunga to play bottom-placed South Adelaide under lights. If the Redlegs thought this was going to be an easy game, they were in for a shock. South was up for the challenge, and in spite of some poor use of the ball and bad kicking, Norwood led comfortably at half-time by a margin of 37 points. The Panthers came out after the long break a different side. They played more direct football and kicked longer. A seven-goal third quarter saw them within striking distance of Norwood at three-quarter time. For Norwood, Tulio Di Matias, a state under-18 player from Ross Trevor College, played as an on-baller and showed a good turn of speed. 31 possessions and 11 marks shows he knows how to win the ball. Mac Bauer is a member of the AIS Level 1 AFL squad and played at centre-half forward in the under-16 state side. He's been playing well as a defender at under-18 level, but a superb goal on the run during the second quarter shows his value at both ends of the ground. Luke Rander is a 197 centimetre overage player who provided a target at full forward, collecting 23 possessions, seven marks and booting three goals. When he was switched into the ruck, he got his hand to 15 hitouts as well. For the Panthers, diminutive 16-year-old rover Caleb Daniel had another high possession game, 29 disposals, five tackles and 12 clearances. Chris Black returned from a stint in the reserves and gathered 27 possessions, playing initially across halfback before moving on to the ball in the second half. Luke Collier started the game at full back, was moved to full forward in the second half and finished with three goals. Tom Driscoll, playing for the first time against his former club, made his presence felt at centre half forward and kicked three goals. The Panthers hit the front twice during the torrid last quarter and a major upset looked possible. The closing stages of the game was a real arm wrestle but in the end, Norwood just managed to hang on and win by three points.